about this language. Uh, a n b n plus 1 such that n is greater than or equal to 0. Now how can we write a, a grammar for this language? So this is different from the language that we, uh, the language a n b n. So what's the difference? The difference is that we have an extra b. So how can we write a grammar for this? So learning from this here, like, you know, we can think of this extra b as being in the middle, right? This is one way of thinking of the b. So if you think of the extra b as being in the middle, you can do a, s, b, or a. So in this case, so how, how can you derive? So you just do A, S, A, A, S, B, sorry. A, S, B. So you keep generating an equal number of A's and B's. And at the end you put, you can't keep uh, using the recursive definition. Eventually you'll have to use this. So you'll put an A. And... Oh, sorry, you need a B. Yeah. You need a B in the middle. So, and this will give you A, 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 B, 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 B. So, in this case, you are thinking of the B as the symbol in the middle. There is another way of thinking of this. So you can think of it in a different way. So instead of thinking of this as B being the symbol in the middle and then surrounded by you know, an equal number of A's and B's, this is one way of thinking of a string like this. You can also think of a string like this, A, 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 B, 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 and then B. So you can think of this string as, this is a string with equal number of A's and B's followed by a B. So you can think of the B as something that comes after. Two different ways of thinking of uh, this thing. Now, if you think of it this way, you can write a different grammar, a different equivalent grammar, which is what? So you can write the following. If you think of it this way, you can write the following grammar. S is S1 followed by a B. S1 followed by a B, where S1 is yeah, A, A, S, B, or A, S, 1, B. So this is A, S, B, or A, S, 1, B? A, S, 1. So this is the definition of, AS, uh, of S1. So this is S1, not S. Why? Because we're saying that S consists of two pieces. This is the S1, which, uh, which is a string that has an equal number of A's and B's in order. A certain number of A's followed by the same number of B's. Then this is followed by a B. So we are viewing the string this way. This is the definition of S1. So here the recursion is on S1. We're, we're not recursing on S. We're recursing on S1. Clear? Any questions on this? So this is A, S, 1, B. So now to generate the same string here, or to derive the same string, I do S is S, 1, B. Then this, I do A, S, 1, B, A, S, 1, B, A, S, 1, B. So now I'm viewing the extra B as being the last B not the B in the middle. Here, I'm viewing it as the B in the middle. But it doesn't matter. Just two different views of the same string that led to two different grammars that are equivalent. 
Uh, any questions? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Certainly, yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's just like the definition, the same definition of this S1A, S1B. Thank you. Yeah, and this, yeah, you need the epsilon, yes. So just the same as the, you know, the grammar that we have defined. Yes. Okay. Uh, any questions? So now we have seen like three examples of context grammars. So let me uh, further generalize this. Uh, so instead of doing a n b n one, so I'm going to do uh, a n b m such that n is greater than or equal to zero and m is greater than n. So here I'm generalizing this. So the additional b's can be an arbitrary number. So uh, one, there is one more, one or more b's uh, uh, relative to a's. Okay, so now, you know, I can modify this grammar easily. So I can just change this b to a capital B, and then I define my capital B as in order to generate this. So here you are saying that you can have as many Bs as you want after the equal number of A's and Bs. So now this should generate for me what? Okay, good. And so this is recursive. You cannot have recursion without a base. So you need a base for the recursion. And this base here should be uh, no, think of this as an independent, as a separate grammar. Forget about uh, the, the grammars up top. So think of this as a separate grammar that will just generate for you as many Bs as you want with at least one B. You should have at least one B. So how does it generate? How would it generate? So this is going to generate Bs forever. So I need a base. What should the base be? Yeah, small b, yeah. So this is going to be your base. Okay, so let's try it, see what we can derive. So, okay, so I can use now, this branch is gonna stay the same. It will generate an equal number of A's and B's. This branch, I will have a capital B, and this capital B, I can use this to generate as many B's as I want. So I can say B, B, and then I can do a B, B, and I can generate as many B's as I want, and at the end I put, I, sh I must substitute a B for it. So, uh, you know, I could have substituted this small b in the beginning. If I substitute the small b in the beginning, I get one extra b. So this is the extra b's. So the, the, what this generates, this generates the extra b's. Okay, now let's write it using the other view. Yeah, and it's gonna be the same, just replace the small b with a capital B. So who remembers what, that, what the grammar was? With the other view, where we view the, uh, the extra b's as being where? In the center. So it's like, uh, you know, this is a, 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 b, 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 b. So, you can view the extra b's as being in the center. So the center-based grammar will look like s is a, s, b, or middle. And my middle is, yeah, the extra b. So the middle I can just, in fact, I can even call it capital B, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't have to call it whatever. You can use any 
to just uh, so it's a capital B and then this capital B is A B Y A B B or B and then you can the B will look uh, or will you will view the extra B's as being in the middle so you will do this S A S B A S B A S B <coughs> and then you substitute capital B and then you put the B's in the middle so here your extra B's are on the right hand side here your extra B's are in the middle uh, B, uh, it's an B, B, or B, B, or B. Can everyone see this? In fact, I can see it here. Yeah. Okay, so we generated three Bs in the middle. Now, these two grammars, these two grammars, this grammar and this grammar, what do we call them? Equivalent, yeah, because they generate the same language, they generate the same set of strings. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, these two grammars are equivalent. And in fact, as we will see later, uh, you know, there is, an, uh, there is no algorithm for determining if two given grammars are equivalent. So, there is no algorithm that can take grammar X and grammar Y and determine if grammar X and grammar Y are equivalent. But there is an algorithm that can take two finite automata, finite automaton AX and finite automaton Y, and determine if finite automaton X and finite automaton Y are equivalent. Uh, you know, this is something that we will discuss later, but, uh, you know, Checking for equivalence, checking the equivalence of two grammars uh, is not a, a problem that can be solved by computers. It's, there, there is no algorithm for this. Uh, you know, as we will see later, uh, not all problems can be solved using computers. So there are problems that are not solvable. Any questions? On, uh, but for now, we just need to understand context-free grammars. Any question on context-free grammars? So, so let me give you one more grammar. We'll see how far we can go with this. How about this? A S uh, A or uh, A S A or B S B or oh, sorry A S B or B S A or S S or epsilon. What do you think this grammar generates? What language do you think it generates? Now let me ask you a more specific question. What can you say about the number of A's and the number of B's in any string that belongs to this language? What can you say about the number of A's and the number of B's in any string that belongs to this language? they must be equal because given these rules there is no way that you can uh, generate an A without generating a B so there are four different rules and there is no rule that allows you to put more A's than B's or more B's than A's right so here are your options this is your S so you can do A S B 
The other option is to do BSA. But each of these options will just put an A and a B. If you choose to use this SS, that's fine. But each one of these S's, uh, you know, is gonna, you're going to substitute for it either this or this or just an epsilon, which, will have an, which has an equal number of A's and B's. So, so this grammar, we can easily see that in this grammar, there is no way you can generate a string that has more A's than B's or more B's than A's. So this is easy to see. But what's harder to see is that this grammar indeed generates all the strings that have an equal number of A's and B's. See, these are two different things, right? Seeing that every string that gets generated using this grammar will have an equal number of A's and B's, this is easy to see. Because there is no way you can add, you know, more A's or more B's. You know, say you are biased, you love A's more than B's and you try to, you know, put more A's then these, these rules are not going to allow you to do so. This is going to tell you, with every A, you have to add a B. With every B, you have to put an A. Okay? It's easy to see that you cannot generate a string that has more A's than B's or more B's than A's. But uh, this grammar, in fact, generates all the strings that have an equal number of A's and B's. Do you see that? Uh, well, this needs a, a more detailed argument. Why this grammar generates all the strings that have an equal number of uh, A's and B's. In other words, there is no string that has an equal number of A's and B's that cannot be generated using this grammar. So the language for this grammar, L, is going to be W such that NA of W equals MB of W. So now next time, next time we will argue or we will you know, try to convince you that this indeed generates all the strings that have an equal number of A's and B's. Try to think about it, okay? Try to think about it uh, between now and Friday.